Hey everybody. So for today's video, we're going to create a candle. Um, we're going to sculpt it in Blender 3D, which is a really powerful 3D package and it's open source and free. Um, we're just going to use it for something kind of simple today, which is just a, uh, a basic little sculpture, but um, it should be a lot of fun. And then afterwards, maybe we'll create a scene in view or something to uh, take advantage of the uh, model we just created. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start here in Blender, um, and we're going to be doing a candle. So the first thing we need is, that instead of a cube, it's going to be a cylinder. So let's get rid of that cube. Just right-click it to highlight on it, tap the Delete key, and hit OK. Or confirm the Delete. Uh, and then we're going to add a mesh, and it's going to be a cylinder. And I'm going to zoom in a bit here. You see it's a little bit, um, you kind of see with only 32 points, uh, it's not exactly a cylinder. You get all these little flat edges. Let's increase that to about 100. That makes it a lot smoother. And then um, I'm going to change the cap type to a triangle fan. Now you can't see what that did, but what it did was it broke up the top into a lot of little triangular polygons. So if I go to edit, well, before I do that, um, let's also change the depth to uh, make this candle a little bit taller. Change it to a 5. All right, I'm now going to click the 5 key on my number pad just to put me in orthogonal mode. Now it looks a little bit funky, but this is, I find it a little bit easier to do stuff. Okay, so now um, I was going to show you the, uh, now you can see here the top is all these triangular things, I, rather than being one large polygon. That's just going to make it easier to do some sculpting. And that's what we're going to do next, actually. We'll go into sculpt mode. And I'm going to tap the 7 key on my number pad, and that's going to put me looking straight down at this. And then, uh, let's see, we're going to go to Dine, Dine Topo, which is going to let us do some free sculpting. And we'll enable that. And under Symmetry, let's see if it makes it a little bit bigger. I'm going to turn off the All Symmetry, because it was going to try to do uh, stuff on both sides. And then I can kind of draw here. Now you see here it's creating mesh uh, as I'm sculpting. However, it's not quite fine enough. I don't want them to be quite this large. So I'm going to click Control Z to undo that. And under the Dine Topo up here, I'm going to set the detail size down to 3. Now if I try to sculpt along the edge here, I get a much finer uh, change in the uh, mesh. I'm just going to go around the edge here. Maybe go around a couple times. This is going to create that kind of lip that you get at the top of a candle. And now if I look at it from the side, it looks a little bit more candle-like. Let's go up to the uh, change to the grab brush. Let's also make our brush a bit bigger. And I can kind of pull up one edge. That's a little too big, so let's undo that. Set the radius down here, maybe. That's a little too small. Let's try about there. That's a little bit better. And here we're just kind of giving it some sort of uh, melted-ish looking sides. And then just to smooth things over, I'm going to hold down the shift key and pass over it a few times. And we'll go back to our draw brush. Go back down to our smaller radius. Sort of work on the repair that lip there a bit that we changed. Okay, let's increase the radius just a bit. And now we'll just put some drips. All you do is you just draw draw in some uh, trails going down the the uh, edge of the candle. Now I'm only going to do one side here, really, because it's all I'm going to uh, be able to see when I actually do a render, and I don't want to waste you know polygons and uh, dense and mesh density. Let's turn that strength up some. There we go.
maybe every once in a while I want to kind of create where a drop has gotten bigger. Let's have one go way down here. All right, and that's really um, all you need to do. We can maybe uh, make this a little bit more concave. Um, let's increase the uh, brush radius some. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key, sorry, the Control key, and just kind of sculpt into it a bit. It's the same brush I'm using. It's just that when you hold the Control key, it reverses it instead of uh, instead of adding uh, uh, adding depth. It's removing depth. Or instead of adding uh, clay or whatever you want to call it. And there we go. A nice, simple, and uh, quick candle. So let's export that. Uh, we go down here to export. And we'll export that as an OBJ. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. And we'll call it candle. Easy as that. Okay, so here we are in Poser. We're not going to spend too much time here, but I'm going to just... Uh, grab a moth figure um, because uh, we could have sculpted it from scratch but uh, since we don't have a whole lot of time in this video I'm just going to use a pre-used uh, pre-made one so I'm going to just click on this figure here the little robot guy and touch the delete button and hit OK to confirm the delete and we'll load up our moth figure now um, this is something I recently purchased uh, I will have a link to where I got it in the show notes uh, let's see, I had under Nature's Wonders, Insects, and a Moth. Okay, we'll move that Moth up a bit by changing his Y translation. And then we'll zoom in. Now, a little bit, something funky about this character. There's something about Poser that kind of annoys me. It looks okay from this side, but if I start to, to turn down, his wings disappear. And that has to do with uh, the surface normals of the model. It's perfectly okay once you render you'll see the bottom of his wing. It just, when you're in the modeling mode, for some reason, it decides not to show it. All right, we're going to give him a quick um, texture and pose. Let's see, nature's wonders, insects, giant moths. And we'll pick a luna moth. That's a nice popular one. Makes it really tiny. All right, so we'll zoom in. And then, uh, you know what? I don't like the Luna Moth. Let's pick something else. Let's do uh, this one here. There we go. That'll work. And now we could um, just use Poser to pose him. Just, you know, using the rotating tool and such like this. But uh, I have a pre-save pose that I'm going to use for now. Let's see. Uh, where did I save those? Moth poses. And I called it my fly. All right, so I have a flying moth. You know what? I think I want bigger wings. Let's see if we can pick a different style of moth that has bigger wings. What's about this silk moth here? Oh, that looks good. I like the big old wings there on that guy. All right. So, and that's all we're going to do. I'm just going to save that. Uh, now, I'm, we're going to be doing our rendering in view, and Poser and View actually play together quite nicely. So I'm just going to save this as a uh, file on the desktop. And you can't see it. It's off the, top, off the, uh, the camera screen here. I'm just going to call it moth.pz3. And that saves it to our desktop. <clears throat> okay, so here we are in view, and I'm going to start by importing that candle. So, um, should be pretty easy. We're going to click on this uh, cube with an arrow down here, which is the uh, thing that triggers the importing of um, objects. And it goes to sort of what you've seen, downloaded recently. Just click on the folder up here to get to your file system, and we'll go all the way up to the desktop and select our candle object. All right, it's a bit on the small side when it comes in, so I'll make it somewhat bigger. And move it closer to the camera. 
Actually, I'm also going to take that ground and get rid of it. Well, actually, we'll keep it. Um, however, you'll notice when I try to move the ground down, the camera moves with it. Um, that's pretty annoying. So just turn that off, click on the camera, and there should be this little thing right here under the first tab that looks like a padlock. Click on that. And now if I go to the ground and move it down, the camera stays where we left it. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to do is take that candle and actually turn it to the angle we made that where it looked the best, which was right about here. And move it down to about here-ish. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. So right about there. Let me a quick preview over here. Okay, you'll yeah, notice it's kind of glaring white. Well, first thing we want to do is we want to fix the material. Since we didn't do anything to when we created this object, for materials or UV maps, it's just put the uh, the view default in, which is sort of this shiny white. So um, I'm gonna just double click here, and we'll change the highlight. Well, we'll uh, turn the highlights all the way off, and we'll pick the overall color of just plain old white. And now it won't be quite so shiny. It's gonna look a little bit better. Now it's a bit yellowish, and that's just because of the atmosphere that. Uh, we currently have set up on the default setting for view. Um, all right, let's go bring that moth in. So we're gonna go back to our import again. And I think we had the moth up here on the desktop as well. Here it is. Now this is a poser file, so it's gonna ask us a few questions while we're importing, possibly depending on what version of poser you have linked up with uh, view. Uh, we're just going to hit no to this if it asks you for your infinite light object. And click no to this. I have no idea what this office foyer thing is. Uh, we're going to import a single frame from the poser animation because we don't want the whole animation, just that one still frame, which happened to be the first one, um, which is frame zero in view. And let's make him a bit bigger. Yes. Turn them around and give them a bit of an angle. Um, he's his angle of rotation or his point that he rotates around is kind of far away from. It's a little on the strange side, but um, yeah, you see that's why it's kind of rotating in a big wide circle. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, we want this to be like a moth flying up to a candle in the dark. So let's uh, move things around here a little bit. I want him to be kind of a uh, bit more of a dynamic composition. And maybe we want to see a little more of that candle, so I'll make it a bit smaller. Let's maybe make the moth a little bit bigger. There we go. Oops. All right. Um, the next thing we want to be, since he's in the dark, let's actually make it dark. Now you could sit here and mess with the lights forever, but um, an easier way to make make a scene dark that I've discovered in view is to just make a big old cube, put it behind everything, and select the basic flat black. So now we have a moth with a candle in the dark. Uh, let's fix the lighting just a little bit. I'm going to go to the atmosphere editor. Uh, this, I'm not a big fan of this photometric spectral, so we're just going to go to the standard spectral and let view automatically uh, select the settings. And you see it's a much better system of lighting over here. Things we got some nice reflected light in the area. Um, I am going to well, well, uh, let's add the light, the candle light. And to do that, I'm just going to add a point light and put it about where the candle flame would be. Just right, kind of peeking over the edge here on this candle. You see it doesn't do very much yet. We'll make it a bit softer and uh, considerably more powerful. And uh, this is key. Um, just double click on the light. 
and that's going to bring up your light editor. Now there's a bit of a bug here. For some reason it doesn't show very well in, uh, in, in view. You see this corner chunk taken out, but you can work around it. We'll work around that today. Um, what we need to go is to turn on the volumetric lighting and we'll show smoke and dust in the light beam. And then, now when I click on the preview, okay, now it's, it's blasting way too bright, but I had turned that power up to 100. So let's set that down back to 10, maybe. That's a bit better. And now we're going to make it a kind of a candlelight color, so we'll make it kind of an orange. And now we're getting somewhere. So I think the sun is still a bit too powerful. Let's uh, just click enter on that, get rid of that dialogue. Let's go over to the sun. And we'll soften the setup a bit. And I'm going to double click on that. And under its shadows, we're going to turn its shadows down pretty low. We'll go down to about 50%. And softness quality all the way up. And it didn't do a whole lot. Um, you'll see maybe some more details came out here in the candle. Okay, now I'm going to change the sun's color to uh, saturate that a bit into like an orangish, grayish color. We'll darken that pretty considerably. There we go. Now we got kind of a nice, soft, glowing sort of color. Um, the problem is that the uh, the way the candle is blocking the light, you kind of create this perhaps a bit too harsh of an outline. So what else I'm going to do is actually just take that point light, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag, and that's going to duplicate that that light. I'm going to just put that behind the candle. And that fills in that area with some light. A little bit better ambient light like you might get from a candle. Um, let's go back to our original point light. Let's make it a bit wider. Because I want it to look like it's a real full. Mm, I don't like that. Let's uh, darken it up a bit. You might have to mess with the intensity of this just a little bit. So let's... Um, let's see. We can set the lighting... Instead of linear fall off, we'll go with quadratic fall off. And that way we'll make it a bit stronger. And actually, that looks pretty good right there. Well, maybe it's a bit too bright. Let's see. Ah, you know what? I'm going to decrease the power back to 10. Increase the intensity of the light here. Let's double it to two and see how that looks. Now that looks a bit more like a flame that's kind of dancing at the edge of this candle. Let me move that up just a tiny bit. And set the power up a little bit. That's one of these things when it comes to lighting, you kind of have to play around with things. And I think that's it right there. So let's set this up for a final. Re well, Actually, before we set it up for a final render, let's do something that's always pretty important. Let's save it. So, um, I'll just save it to my projects folder. Call it Moth and Candle. Save that off. And now I'm going to set it up for a final render. Go to Final, Render to Screen. And we'll set this up nice and large. Let's make it so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to set this up to roughly 15 megapixels. That'll uh, produce a pretty good image for uh, print size that we can sell. So with that, we'll let it go. So this is how the picture turned out. Um, pretty good. I did a little bit of uh, post-production on this, uh, mostly just to adjust the colors a bit. And I added this flame. This was just a picture I grabbed off the internet of a flame and pasted it on. So um, no, that's pretty much it, and I hope you enjoyed tonight's video. So thank you, everybody, and good night.